So to understand why the law is important when it comes to the issue of online harassment, it's important to reflect just a little bit on what that actually means. What does the law mean? It seems rather obvious, but the law is basically a set of rules that we've agreed upon within society to adhere to. And we do this by formulating rights and obligations. A right is something that an individual is entitled to or that they are owed. And an obligation is something that generally the state needs to provide to those individuals that are in its care. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of where the different rights and obligations relevant to online harassment come from. In the following videos, we'll take a deeper dive to look more closely at what the exact courses of actions can be and what the potential remedies can be. Um, but now we're going to first take a step back and look at the different systems of law. First, we have domestic law. That's the law that exists within a particular country and that governs events, transactions and persons within that country or that have a connection to it. Second, we have transnational law, and that's law that regulates actions or events that extend across national borders. Third, we have supranational law. That is a body that is made up of member nations that has powers that its own members no longer have because they handed those powers over to this transnational body. An example of this is the European Union. And finally, we have international law, which means law between nations that stem from agreements, usually treaties, or customs that are recognized by all nations. These videos will focus on both domestic and international systems, as these are the most relevant when it comes to the subject of online harassment. First, we'll take a look at the different systems of law that can exist within a domestic jurisdiction. One of the things that is really important to keep in mind here, that different jurisdictions have very different setups and different rules. It is therefore also always really important to look at the exact options that are available within the specific system in which you operate or are considering bringing a claim. First, we have civil law systems. Um, they look quite different from each other, but they have in common that they have regularly updated legal codes or laws. So case law is less important in these jurisdictions. And that means that when you are considering bringing a claim, your primary reference would be the law. Second, we have common law systems. They also have laws, so codes, but they rely much more heavily on case law, which is also sometimes called precedent. That means that when you want to find out what your legal position is, you need to do a lot more research concerning the recent decisions that have been made in the courts in the relevant system. Then third, we have customary law systems. That is usually unwritten law that is passed down generation to generation by elders. And in some situations, customary law actually also has a legal basis. For example, in Canada, um, the um, customary Aboriginal law has a constitutional foundation. Then we have religious legal systems. Uh, that's where the law emanates from texts or traditions within a specific religious tradition. And finally, there are mixed legal systems in which all of these different factors can come together. As I just mentioned, different domestic systems have different characteristics. So it's important to look very specifically at the domestic system in which you operate to see what remedies are available. However, it is important to also know that there are specific bigger categories that you will see in the different domestic systems. The first of those is criminal law. And this is where the state punishes individuals for behavior that is generally considered to be particularly harmful for society. The second category is civil law which generally looks at individuals bringing a claim against other individuals or other private entities. And the final category is constitutional law, where an individual can pursue a claim against the state for a violation of a specific human right. Besides domestic law, we also have the international law system. International law is largely treaty-based. An example of this is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which protects the right to freedom of expression in Article 19. This is a treaty that has been signed onto by over 170 countries worldwide. 
it is important to understand that these treaties look at an obligation that the state has towards individuals. So it is not possible for one individual to bring a human rights claim against another person, generally speaking. Overall, what you would be doing if you pursue a claim under international law is address the failure of the state of having protected your rights. Before you come to that, um, you would generally have to go through the national legal system in order to be able to access an international tribunal or an international court, for example, to pursue your claims.